Today is the fifteenth uh, of November, two thousand fifteen, and you've joined us for the Pineville House Church. We're going to try to do it on both YouTube and Sermon Audio today, and uh, hopefully this will will come out. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll just put it on Sermon Audio and go from there. Um, we have some selections that have been handed to us. Mark and Rosette choose the selections. And so the first one is going to be taken from the Psalter. And I'm going to try to switch the camera around at least to see if we can get that in here. And can you scoot down here, Rosette? <laughs> There. Now we can see her pretty face. <laughs> anyway, 86A, pa pa <coughs> excuse me, page 81. Mark, you want to start that? Oh, tis thou an answer to give here. I need thee and poor make my plea. Preserve thou my soul, save thy servant, O God. For godly and trusting is he. Since all the day long do I cry unto thee. Show mercy, O Lord, unto me. The soul of thy servant cause thou to rejoice. I lift up my soul unto thee. Thou Lord of so mercy, forgiving thou art. Abundant thy kindness and love. Who those who sincerely upon me do call. My voice, Lord, I can from above. In day of my trouble upon thee I'll call, and answer for me thou prepare. Among all the gods there is none like to thee, and no words but thy can compare. All nations thou madest will come to thee, Lord, and bow in thy name they shall walk. Because thou art great, and great wonders hast done, for thou and thou only art God. <clears throat> okay, the next one is in the Old School Hymnal, page 31. Joy Unspeakable. I was just thinking about this song, Joy Unspeakable, you know. When I was coming up as a child, we sang this song. They never gave um, Wait a minute. Um, this is not right. Page 311, okay. Uh, when I was coming up, the kid would sing this song, and uh, it's true that <clears throat> grace is joy unspeakable, but so is election. We were never given the joyful doctrine of election. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplied every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory of the happy. 
has never yet been. Maybe that's what that's about. Maybe that's the half that was never told. <laughs> when I was a kid, the half has never yet been told. You were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> I have found the pleasure I once great. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous blessing I have saved from the awful gulf of sin. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so real, I can see his smiling face. I have found the joy no tongue can tell, how the waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well, springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory over heaven. That has ever yet been told. Okay, the last one is page 32, Psalm 22, before we go over to the other part of our service. Page 32, <clears throat> Psalm 22. <clears throat> Mark, you want to, is that 22I or 22H? Twenty-two eight. Okay. To all my brothers, I'll declare the glory of His holy name. I'll praise You where the people meet, who fear the Lord His praise proclaim. All sons of Jacob praise His grace. And stand in all, all Israel's race. For he has not despised the poor. He has not sworn the wretched state. He has not turned away his face. From anyone in trouble great. When he cried to him in grief. He heard his prayer and sent relief. Within the congregation great, I offer praise you have supplied. I'll pay my vows with them who fear. The meek with food are satisfied. Who seek the Lord shall him adore. May your heart live forevermore. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we pray that you would be with us in this service. We pray that your name and your word would be glorified and exalted. We ask this in Christ's name. And for your glory, we know we can do nothing in of it ourselves. Amen. Okay, we're going to be looking at a passage today in the 10th chapter of Acts and uh, this is the story of course of Cornelius and uh, we're just going to read through this and it's uh, really a, quite an interesting little event that happened in the New Testament that has implications for us today we're going to just start and read through it and what I'm going to do is I read through this passage I'm just going to make some comments as I read through it I'm not going to scream and yell <laughs> I'm not going to pound on a pulpit in fact I'm not even at a pulpit I'm sitting in my recliner the only thing I'm missing is my coffee and Rosette's going to go get that for me <clears throat> I often kid around with people um, <laughs> I got this call one time from a lady 
And she said, she started the conversation, Larry, 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 you need to change your delivery. You sound like somebody sitting in a recliner drinking a cup of coffee. <laughs> and I said, that's exactly what I'm doing. People have this attitude that you have to be towering up in a pulpit over somebody beating on a pulpit, screaming and yelling, crying, stomping, whatever other kind of means of the flesh you can use. Uh, thank you for the coffee, Rosette. What, a, what a, any other kind of means you can use uh, to try to coerce people into believing what you're trying to convey. We don't need any of that. We either believe that the Holy Spirit is conveying and enlightening us to the truth, or we believe that man is. Now, Charles Finley thought Finney thought man would do it. You know? And so did a lot of other people. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a, satir a satir satirian of the band called the Italian Band. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, <clears throat> which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He, he, he lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and devout soldier of them, that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh into the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been great <coughs> sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. <clears throat> and there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now I want to make just a couple comments here. You know, this was a vision. Okay, this was a, you know, Let's go back to 11 and see what it says. He saw heaven opened. Okay. Now, this was sent to him by God himself. Have you ever thought about this? This, this if you want to call it trance or vision or whatever, heaven was open to him. Okay. And a voice out of heaven said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. <clears throat> now, I want to go back to 12, and it says, All manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. There are those today that are trying to say that we should not eat meat, that we should be total vegetarians, or we should be What's the new term? Uh, vegs, or they got all kind of terms out there now. That we shouldn't eat certain meats. We shouldn't eat those of the cloven hoof, or we shouldn't eat this, or we shouldn't eat that. I don't know all that. All I know is what it says here: all manner of four-footed beast of the earth and wild beasts. <laughs> creeping things 
and bowels of the air. That pretty well includes it all, doesn't it? <clears throat> I guess it doesn't include fish, does it? And that's what the Catholics want to feed is fish. This doesn't even talk about fish. <laughs> And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Now Peter is going to tell the Lord what to do again. Remember, Peter's done this in the past. Let us build three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses, or whatever. And what did they say back then at the Transfigure, I mean, at the Transfiguration? What did God say to Peter? This is my beloved son, hear ye him. Peter didn't learn very fast here, did he? Not so, Lord. <laughs> Not so, Lord. <clears throat> now is this Peter proclaiming his good works or what? I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Have you ever heard of someone like that? I've never done this or that. You know, I've never done anything wrong. I've always lived a good moral life. Isn't that what the rich young ruler said? I've kept the commandments from my youth. I've never eaten anything that's a common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him the second time. <laughs> Some of us have to be told several times before we'll start listening to God. What did the voice say the second time? What God hath cleansed, thou call not thou common. Look, if God has cleansed uh, our food, it's not common food, it's blessed food. You know? Remember singing, remember praying as a little child. God is great, God is good, and we thank you for our food. By his hand we now are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. God has cleansed what we're eating. It is not common, it's blessed. This was done thrice. <laughs> Verse 16. This was done three times. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Oh. Now, sometimes God brings events into our lives People say, oh, Larry's preaching, you know, special revelation. No. But I believe that God is present providentially in the lives of every one of his elect. I'll repeat that. I believe that God is providentially active in the lives of all of his elect. Just like he was providentially active in the life of Peter here. And he had sent this to Peter to show uh, to bring things in full circle as these people appro approached him the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon which was surnamed Peter was lodged there while Peter thought on the vision the spirit said unto him behold three men seek thee what spirit are we talking about here? We're talking about the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Excuse me. Have you ever had an experience in your life where you knew that the Holy Spirit of God had spoken to you and it told you something that you should do and you followed the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit. I know I've had that happen to me. Then Peter went down to the men which were 
sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. God can use even people who are in the flesh. Because we see that Peter was in the flesh just a few verses above. When Peter said, Not so, Lord. <laughs> now what he said in verse 14, Peter said, Not so, Lord. After the Lord telling him to eat of this uh, food, and Peter saying, Not so, Lord. We see that God uses people that even get in the flesh. God can use a donkey. God can use you. God can use me. God can use whoever he chooses to use. <clears throat> it says that uh, God, by an holy angel, you know, Cornelius was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them and, a cer and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Well, Cornelius didn't understand that Peter was a man, just a man. He wasn't anything other than a man. Peter took him up saying, stand up. <laughs> I myself also am a man. You know, there's a lot of people that are exalting men to the point of almost making them gods. That's what the Roman Catholic Church does with the Pope, who's the Antichrist. But there are people in the... Uh, uh, different Christian supposed communities that are exalting men like that, putting them way up on a pedestal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together and said to them, You know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. We should be careful, and this is uh, an admonition to me and to everyone else, we should be careful to call any man common or unclean. We are all sinners. All men are born and conceived in sin. But we do not know who God's elect are. We don't have election meters and go around zapping people and determine whether they're elect or reprobate. We know there are two kinds of people in the world. There are goats and there are sheep. But we do not have the authority to call uh, any man common or unclean. That's what it says. He says, God has showed Peter that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who then, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee immediately. Therefore I sent to thee, thou hast well done, that thou art come down. Therefore we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded to thee of God. <clears throat> Cornelius understood that whatever Peter was going to tell them was of God. Then Peter opened his mouth of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Now, he's speaking here, okay, of contrasting the Gentiles with the Jews. We know up until this time that even Christ himself said that he had come to call the 
lost sheep of the house of Israel when he talked to the lady about healing um, and how she said that she ate of the crumbs under the table but here Simon has been revealed to him Peter that of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons in other words he is not just calling the Jews he has elect from every people every tongue and every nation and that's what he says isn't it in the next verse but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him look if a person fears God and if a, if a person is working righteousness and if a person is accepted by God that means that he is one of God's elect that's what it means the word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ he's Lord of all <laughs> God is not just sovereign over the Jews. He's sovereign over the Gentiles. He's sovereign over all of his creation. That word I say ye you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God. Notice that? Notice that? Who did God show himself to? Peter didn't say that he was preaching universal salvation here. But he did say that God was no respecter of persons as it relates to the Jews only. But Peter made it clear that God did not reveal himself to all of the people. He says not to all the people. But unto witnesses chosen before of God. He's preaching election here to witnesses chosen before of God before the foundation of the world even to us now he's including them in God's elect because God has to, had told him to go and speak to them evidenced by the fact that they had been spoken to to get Peter to speak to them who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Notice that he is really repeating what we find in John 3.16 For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life but notice just in the 41st chapter he qualifies who the believers are in the 40th verse he says God raised up God raised up the third day and showed him openly not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen of God well who are those that are going to believe upon him okay Whosoever believeth on him shall receive remissions of sins whose eyes have been opened up and have been chosen of God. That's who, who the believers are. <clears throat> when Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Notice here, it did not say the Holy Ghost fell on all of them didn't say the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them you know in Isaiah it talks about he gave them eyes so they would not see and ears so they would not hear but here while Peter was speaking this these words about the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word would, would it have been possible that 
someone that was in that group may not have heard the word? Of course it may have been. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Who, what's, he, what's he referring to there? Those of the circumcision. Those of the circumcision which believed were the Jews. Because it had always been proclaimed that the Jews were God's chosen people. You know, there are certain Jews out there today that think that they are God's chosen people and the Gentiles are Goyim. And they don't have any special blessings from God. The Gentiles are just out. <laughs> well, there were some of those kind of people here in this uh, audience. Those of the circumcision which believed were astonished. These were actually, you know, Jewish believers. But this is the way they had been taught their whole life. And as many came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Well, what do we get from this passage of Scripture? What can we learn from this? That one, we do not know who God's elect are. And we're not to call any man common or unclean. Now, Scripture does tell us that by their fruits you shall know them. That doesn't mean we are not to make discernments about people. But what we are not to do is we are not to put ourselves in a position of trying to say that uh, one person is common and unclean just because they haven't come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ yet. Think about ourselves and how brought God has brought us out uh, from darkness into his marvelous light. Think about what, the work that he's worked in our hearts. And he's not limited by time or space. He's not limited by our sins. He's not limited by our corruption. He's not limited by our depravity. And God is marvelous. And he is the one who shows amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And blind, but now I see. So help us to gain some insight from this teaching today we pray do we have a final selection 33 33 in the old school hymnal 33 we're using the old school hymnal we love to sing out of it and we believe in singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making a joyful noise to the Lord. Let's see here, 33. In songs of sublime adoration and praise, we Break forth and extol the ancient of days. His rich and distinguishing grace, His love from eternity fixed upon you, broke forth and discovered its flame, when each with the cords of His kindness He drew, and brought you to love His great name. Oh, had he not pitied the state you were in, your bosoms his love had never fell. You all would have lived, would have died to in sin, and sunk with the load of your guilt. What was there in you that could merit esteem, or give a creator he life? Was even so, Father, you ever must sing, because it's so good in my sight. 
Was all of thy grace we were brought to obey. While others will suffer to go, Thou knowest by nature we chose as our way, Which leads to the regions of woe. Then give all the glory to his holy name, To him all the glory belong. Be yours the high pleasure to sound forth his name, And crown him in each of your songs. Mark, can you close it with prayer? Father, Lord God, Lord above, we pray, we love you. Be with us today our services we honor your son Jesus 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 Christ's name Amen. Father we thank you that your word is true and that you have done a marvelous thing for all of your people and they've been chosen you from the foundation of the world and the work was completed on Mount Calvary and you said it's finished help us to always take hope to complete the work of Christ we pray in Christ's name Amen